Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to focus on creating our very first image through Generative AI. We're going to be using Automatic 1111 as our chosen interface. Let's get started. Once you're on the Think Diffusion page, you're going to click Launch up, up here. You're going to need to log in if you haven't done that. And then we're going to choose Automatic 1111. I'm going to choose the Turbo Machine here because it's the fastest one, but you can choose the one suited to your budget. Once you click Launch, you're going to see this window here. You can select how long you want it to run. It's going to be defaulted for one hour. I'm going to press Launch here. You can, whenever you want, stop the machine to save any remaining time. So you don't have to worry about the time that you set in the beginning. You can also expand the time whenever you want. Now it's going to take about one to three minutes to start this. So I'll see you in a minute. Once your machine is loaded, it's going to look something like this. Now on the top here, you have your remaining time. If you press change here, you can add or subtract time. And if you want to stop, just click the stop button here and your remaining time will be saved. The time starting machine will not count towards your credits, only the time actual running. So all the time running here right now will be subtracted from your account, which means that even your idle time as soon as the machine has started will actually be subtracted from your credits. Now, this is automatic 1111. And on the right side here, we have our folder structure. So we have automatic 1111 here. If you go into that, you have all the folders. What you might be interested in specifically is the outputs folders. So all your images will be saved here. Now we have a couple of drop downs here and this one first, stable diffusion checkpoint. Here you can select the model that you want to use. I've selected the Think Diffusion Excel model here, which is a good default model. Now there are a lot to choose from depending on what you want to do. Maybe you want to create anime images, maybe you want to create realistic images. Some of them are tailored to specific styles and some of them are just good average base models like Think Diffusion Excel, which is a good model for good looking cinematic style images. I start here with the prompt. There's a positive prompt here. So I could say cat in a hat. And now I could just generate this with all the default settings. Uh, we're going to change some settings in a bit to make this image look a little bit better. But let me just quickly show you what happens here now that I am generating a cat in a hat with the default settings. So we have a cat in a hat. It's fairly okay, but as you can see, it's a little low resolution. This is just a 512 by 512 image. So that's 512 pixels in width and height. Now I'm going to close down the files here on the side so we can see better. And now what I want to do is I want to change the width and the height here. So this is an Stable Fusion XL model and those have been trained on a higher resolution. So 1024, so 1024 pixels is the base resolution for an Excel model. So that's what we're going to be using here. So if I generate again here now, we will be getting a new cat in a hat. We will also be getting it in a higher resolution. So our image will look a little bit better. It will be a completely new cat. But as you can see here on the image, it's much more detailed. You can see the, the strands of hair coming from the cat. The eyes are super crisp compared to the other one. Now, if I would just keep generating, let's say that I want to do four images, each new image will actually be a random image. And that's because our seed, our starting noise that Stable Diffusion uses is set to random. So let me show you here once these four images have generated. As you can see in the background, these are coming in live now. So this is the speed of the turbo machine. So this is high resolution images of a cat in a hat. And here you can see four images, all of them looking fairly good, I would say. We have this one where the ears pop out of the little hat here, but uh, maybe that's intended. We don't know. We talked about the seed. And that's this little number here. It's set as minus one, and that means it's randomized. And if you set this a number, let's say we pick this image, for example, we can reuse the seed by pressing the little green button here. That will give us the number here that was used for this image. So if we would generate this image again, we could do it two images. We will get the exact same image. So you can 
replicate an image with the exact same settings. Just bear in mind that if you're trying to replicate an image that you found on the internet with someone else's settings, it might be hard to replicate because there are so many small changes that can be made that you might not be able to replicate exactly. But if you're doing this by yourself, you can easily replicate an image by using the same seed and the same settings. As you can see here, just keep generating the same one. However, we're gonna keep using a random seed. So we're gonna do minus one here and we're gonna again change to four images. I'm gonna show you a little bit more, more about the prompting. So we had a cat in a hat here. We also have a negative prompt, which means that we can take out stuff we don't want. Let's say that we, we get a lot of dogs in the image. So we can basically just put dog in there. We weren't getting a lot of dogs previously, but if we were, you could put that in and it would try to remove any dogs in the image. And I think the cat would be fairly happy about that as well. Next up, I'm going to show you the styles here. So the styles are a set of predefined prompts that goes both in the positive and the negative prompt, but they aren't shown. So let's say that I put cinematic here. That means I'm getting a lot of extra text in here and a lot of text in here that is not shown. However, it will impact our image. So now we will get a cat in a hat in a more cinematic style. So let's see if that changes our output here as we generate. Our first cat in a hat seems to have this uh, little top hat and then this one as well. We're getting some beautiful backgrounds and lighting that we didn't have in the previous images. So these hats seems to be a recurring theme and that will probably be because of the styles here. So there's something in this style that indicates that uh, the cat should wear this style of hat. It could be anything. Stable Diffusion interprets the words and gives us images that it thinks we want. But you can clearly see that we have more of a cinematic style on our image now. Now there are a lot of styles to choose from. We can remove the cinematic style here. Let's say for example that we want digital art instead. So let's put digital art in there and let's generate again. And we can clearly see now that the photographic element of the cat in a hat has gone and this is more of a digital painted style and you can keep adapting that this in uh, whatever way you want let's choose another one pixel art here and let's generate now stable diffusion will try to generate four cats in a hat in a pixel art style now bear in mind if you're doing pixel art like this the pixels won't exactly line up but i think this is a pretty good result and a good baseline if you want to keep working on your pixel art now we haven't delved into all the settings here we have looked at the width and the height. We have checked the, the batch count or how many images you want. We will quickly look at the sampling method here and the sampling step. So the sampling method takes your prompt and turns it into an image. And there are a lot to choose from. Euler A, which is the default one here, is a very popular one. I personally prefer something called DPM++ to Keras. But since there are so many to choose from, I recommend that you try them for yourself. If you don't want that, use the 2M Keras or the Euler A. Those are great. But what you can do, start a little script down here called the XYZ plot. We can select here sampler and we can select here steps. And here we can add a lot of the samplers. So if we take a couple of them in here, or a lot of them, some at random, it's not super important. We just want to see some difference. As your image generates, it goes from noise to a complete image. And each step makes it a little better each time. And I'm going to show you here what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Let's do 30 steps here as well. Now this will take quite some time to generate. I'm going to change this to one image as well. I will also change this to the cinematic style here. So I will generate this. I will be back in a second. As you can see now we have a very different kind of output here. You can see up here in the top you have the name of the samplers. So we have DPM++ to Mkaris for example on the left side. We have Euler A here. This row here which was the one that we, we used previously. And as you can see from the steps here from five steps, basically none of the samplers get a working image. So this is, you can sort of see the noise that it's starting with. And as for each step, it creates more of an image. And at 10 steps, most samplers have kind of gotten the composition, but the details aren't there yet. And in 15 steps, 20 steps, you can really see the images get together. 
Uh, now this is a fairly low res image so you can't really see the details here but at about 20 to 30 steps this is where the magic happens so that's where you want to be to get the most detail out as possible and like i said i personally prefer sampler like for example to mcaris here to the left which is what's called a non-divergent sampler so if you look at the image at 10 steps here it's similar to the one at 30 steps it's not the exact same one but it's a similar one because it's converging towards the same image now euler a here for example is a divergent sampler so it's not going to converge towards the same image the image is going to keep changing you can see that in the first image here the hat angle and the cat is, is slightly different from what's going on in the second image here and the rest of the images so bear that in mind and that's why i recommend dpm plus plus to mcaris as my sampler of choice we're going to remove the script here i'm going to change the to mcaris i'm going to change this to 25 steps i'm going to make four new images and this is my preferred way of creating an image through text to image in stable diffusion now there are a lot of advanced ways to get what you're looking for but this in the most simplistic way is a great way of getting good looking images so i hope you learned something today we're going to continue on in the next chapter learning more about stable diffusion and generative ai but after this chapter you should be able to generate an image just like this